Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and sincerity. And salutations and blessings to the hopeful elect, believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm entitled to this lesson, but uh, this lesson began with a thought, you know, how Eve is so fucking prideful and the things that are set to occur is going to affect her the most. Okay. You know, she's been lifted up by this damn serpent. Esau, you the so-called white man. She's been exalted to a status, you know, where she feels that she don't need her man. All right. That she don't have to be in submission. And when the money crashes, okay, and, and, and when all these things are set to occur, Eve, you're gonna be humble. You you're gonna be in a a a a, a low estate. You're gonna be in a, a a bad case. Why? Because you wanna uh, follow the way of your oppressor. Okay. Now I got some information regarding um, I got some information regarding buying power. Okay. And, and when all these things are, are set to happen, because the Lord said they're going to happen, Eve, you're going you're gonna to be fucked up, okay? Now, I got this information right here. <clears throat> I looked it up. Which demographic has the most buying power, right? And uh, let's see. Right here, it says uh, millennials. Those currently in their mid-teens to mid-30s. All right, and you see Eve on these fucking TikToks, you know, doing these certain videos, just lifted up in pride, you know, flaunting what they have, you know, uh, not shamefaced, right? It says uh, millennials, those currently in their mid teens to mid thirties, are estimated to have more spending power than any other age group, bigger than boomers. By 2030, millennials outnumber baby boomers. Lord willing, you know, <laughs> we won't make it to 2030 in this wicked ass queendom. All right? I have some more information. Let's go back up. Okay. I believe this is it. From the University of Georgia. All right? Let me uh, go down to the information. And Lord willing, I I put this in the in the in the description box. All right, you even see uh, Hispanic brothers, right? Their 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 uh, buying power has increased, right? It says uh, so-called African American, which we know as the tribe of Judah, right? Uh, African American market growth in 2020, African American economic clout energize the u.s consumer market as never before and that's another thing we constantly tell you jace you the one upholding this fucker system you the one upholding esau man all right if you stop purchasing and, and and doing the things that you do okay this devil system will fall quicker but it's all you how about shy because since now you're staying on esau when the lord take away your stay and your staff of bread then you're gonna realize okay it says the buying power of African Americans rose to 1.6 trillion or 9% of the nation's total buying power. And you know, Eve makes up a, a big portion of the so called African American community, right? It says in 2020, uh, the 10 states with the largest African American markets are Texas. You see a lot of proud women in Texas, man. New York. Georgia, oh, of course, you know, Atlanta, California, Florida, Maryland, North Carolina, Virginia, Illinois, and New Jersey, right? It says the states with the fastest growth in black. See, how you go from African-American to black? See, they trying to show you, even in this article, man, that you don't know who the hell you are, man, right? It says the states... With the fastest growth in black buying power between 2010 and 2020 are North Dakota, South Dakota, Hawaii, Idaho, Washington, New Hampshire, 
Oregon, Wyoming, Arizona, and Nevada. And, and for real, for real, you know, that's that's a trap that the Lord has set. All right? You, you, you're increasing your buying power. All right? You're increasing the funds that you have. All you're doing is getting these FRNs. All right? You got Biden already talking about regulating cryptocurrency. Okay? Now, hey, man, we here. All right? Let's see. As you see, you got even got uh, so-called Native Americans. All right, their spending power has increased. Now I want to go back. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yep. It says, "What race is the biggest consumer?" Right. It says, "Target consumer spending share in the U.S. in 2020 by race and ethnicity in 2020." Hispanic consumers accounted for nearly 15% of spending at Target, while African, so-called African Americans represented nearly 9%, right? Meanwhile, consumer accounted, meanwhile, so-called white consumers accounted for nearly 67% of the company's uh, consumer spending share, right? But again, Esau don't care about his own, man. All right, it's the up, up, upper echelon, all right, who 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 dictates everything that uh, goes on here in America and around the world, all right? That's why they're going to be taken out of power. Now, let's see. There's something that I had looked up earlier. Um, yeah, here we go. What race spends the most money on clothes? <laughs> Let's take a look at this, right? It says affluent so-called black American household spends $246 billion in the past year in total expenditures. Black men and women are spending more on designer clothes, business clothing, and formal evening wear than the overall sample of affluent consumers. Why are you so-called Negroes, all right, which again is the, the head tribe, all right, the tribe of Judah. Why are you the one being targeted on, on, on the things that you're spending, right? Because the Lord is setting you up. And Eve, again, women, out, especially Eve, outnumber men. And this, this, this thing is going to be the thing that affects you. are going to be humble, Eve. You're going to be in a bad case. Now, I did another Google search of so-called black women, right, flaunting herself. And, and this is what you get. You get shit like this, man. You get shit like this. You know? Damn shame, man. What else you get? You get shit like this. Look at Eve, man. Lift it up in pride because you have... Um, because you have resources in this wicked queendom, all right? You're able to, uh, you have liberty to gather, bro. You have, uh, and it ain't just the, the so-called uh, eights or nines, right? But there ain't no fucking tens in this kingdom, okay? You got fake eyelashes, <laughs> all right? Comb catchers as they are, right? Fake hair. You're not a ten, Okay? That these women are lifted up in fucking pride and the Lord is getting ready to humble you. Okay? Look at this shit. What the fuck is this? What is that? You know? We're in the, in our, in the worst case scenario, man. See this shit? <sighs> lifted up in pride, man. But the Lord is getting ready to humble you women, man. Alright? This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 32 and verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days ye shall be troubled, ye careless women. Yeah, you careless as hell, man. All right? You, you wearing these scantily tight clothing, right? And, and pretty soon we come into the time where your ass going to be fucking ravished. And we're going to see how many, of your, how many of you wear them goddamn tights then, right? Many days and years shall ye be troubled, 
ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, and the gathering, excuse me, the gathering shall not come. Tremble ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you, make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins, see? You're going to be in a bad case. The Lord is going to break your staff, your stay, all right? And the only way you're going to uh, be able to continue with this system is if you get that karagma, all right? And you, it, it, it's going to be inserted either in your head, you know, or in your hands or wherever, man. You're going to have to take that thing to continue here. And you're going to be in the worst case, all right? This is the book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. And we understand these things now, right? That we sinned against your by shah, all right? That, that we went off. But we coming back to him begging for his mercy, okay? It says, until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. See, is the Lord that's bringing us forth to this light. Okay? This is going to uh, uh, flourish, all right, into everlasting life. Okay? It says, verse 10, Then she that is my enemy, see, Eve is the enemy, all right, in, in, in this system, man. Because Esau has set it up, you know, for her to be exalted over the man. All right? Then the Lord says he's going to create a new thing. Right? A woman shall come past a man. Okay, well, we're in that time. All right? It says again, she that is my enemy shall see it. You're going to see the salvation. You know, when, when all hell break loose, when the, when the money crash and, and there's no food. You're going to be asking for a man then. Right? <laughs> it says, and, sh and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is the Lord, Yahweh shall shout thy power? Yeah, you lift it up in pride, man. You go back to that Eve eating that nasty as abominable food, saying a Hebrew uh, come in my, my DM and say I shouldn't eat this. And you just got, you you make a, a meme or, 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 or a TikTok video, man. The Lord going to humble your ass. It says, where is the Lord, Yahweh shall shout thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire in the street. See, you want to be in a worst case. You want to be in a bad case, okay? Because of your fucking pride, all right? This is Second Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 50. For many great miseries shall be, to, be, shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. Why? Because they have walked in great pride and ease. So fucking prideful, man. It's, it's ridiculous. Like I said, from the from the eights <laughs> to the fives, you know? It, it's ridiculous, man. But you're going to be humble pretty soon, right? This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall, see? And it's just a matter of time. The Lord is setting the stage to bring you women down, all right? You, 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 you've been, you've had your, your uh, what is the word, uh, your uh, 15 minutes of fame, all right? You, you, you've been uh, exalted to the highest level in this kingdom. Right, where you say you don't need a man, okay? I'm a I'm an independent woman. We're gonna see how independent you are in that day. <laughs> when your ass can't go to the grocery store and get you something to eat, all right? When when the, when the money crashes and you ain't got no food, man, we're gonna see how prideful you is. Again, Proverbs 16 and 18: Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. See, a haughty spirit before fall. It's written. It's just going to play out. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, see, 
and walk with stretch forth necks and one ton eyes. Yeah, you see that? Undisciplined. See? Walking and mincing as they go. Yeah, riding the fucking cock carousel. Right? Walking and mincing as they go. And making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And this affects who the most? You so-called Negro women, man. All right? You put all this shit in your head, trying to be like the oppressor. And now you, to the point now, you done process all your hair to your head. Well, you constantly got to wear a wig. See that? It says, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery, see, of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and and their round tires like the moon the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers yeah all your your worldly goods are not going to be worth anything man see that bonnets excuse me the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earring the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel. Yeah, you, you, you hey man, the, the Lord gonna be so cold with it. You and I ain't gonna be able to have have any uh feminine wares, man. All right, you're gonna be funky as hell in that day. You're not gonna have any of those luxury clothes you flaunting, none of that shit. That says Isaiah 3 and 22, the changeable suits of apparel and the, the mantles. And the wimples and the crisping pen, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. See, instead of girdle, a rent. Yeah, we've seen that with Lizzo. All right. And she's the poster child for all these obese women. Right? Lift it up in fucking pride. It says, and instead of of well set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a gird of sackcloth. Excuse me, instead of a, a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. And instead of burning, excuse me, and burning instead of beauty. You're gonna be in the worst case. Alright? Why? Cause you you hate the words so you hot about shower shy. All right, you follow the way of your oppressor. You lift it up in pride, matter of fact. Stand in the book of Isaiah. We're going to close it out here. All right. Isaiah chapter 30. Okay. Because you 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 stay on this damn devil. All right? You don't you don't want to hearken to the words of your how by shall shall. Okay, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and I'm going to get to the point. Okay, verse 8, it reads, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, Lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That encompasses all of Israel. You two-thirds, you men and women. All right, but in, in this case, we're talking on these women. We say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Yeah, don't tell us about the law. Don't tell us we should keep the law, right? It's like it. It says, don't tell us we should keep the law, okay? It says, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out the way, turn aside the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, and trust in oppression, you trust in Esau, and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. 
swelling out in a high wall whose breaking come up suddenly in an instant. See that? It's going to come upon you women suddenly. And you're not going to have any hope. You're not going to have any recourse. All right? Why? Because you're lifted up in pride. Okay? That's going to be it for the lesson. Lord willing, has been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Bahashim, Rakai Kodash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Lord willing, coming to you with another lesson. Till the next time I say Shalom. On.